This video is about rewriting functions in terms of power series. All the examples that we'll do in this section will be based on the formula for the geometric series, the fact that the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n is equal to 1 over 1 minus x for x between negative 1 and 1. We want to express the function 2 over x minus 3 as a power series. And we want to do this by using the geometric sum formula. The trick here is going to be to rewrite 2 over x minus 3 so it looks more like 1 over 1 minus something. Then we can treat whatever that something is as x and plug into the formula to get a power series. So that's the idea. Now I'm starting with 2 over x minus 3. And I don't really like the x minus 3. I'd rather this was 3 minus x, because that reminds me more of 1 minus x. So I could rewrite it like this, but my two expressions now aren't equal. This one's the negative of this one. So I, I can fix that by just sticking a negative sign out in front. Now my two expressions are equal, because I've just multiplied my first expression by negative 1 over negative 1 to get this expression. But I still don't really like the 3 minus x. I wish that were 1 minus x. It'd be nice if I could just divide the 3 by 3 to get 1. But in order to leave the expression unchanged, I'm going to need to divide everything by 3, both the top and the bottom. This gives me negative 2 thirds divided by 3 minus x over 3, which I can also write as negative 2 thirds times 1 minus x over 3. Now if I bring the negative 2 thirds out front, I have negative 2 thirds times 1 over 1 minus x over 3. Using my geometric sum formula, this is the same as negative 2 thirds times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x over 3 to the n. I'm just plugging in x over 3 for x in this formula. I've now found a power series representation, but I'm going to clean it up a little bit and make it look more standard. I'll bring the negative 2 thirds into the summation sign and distribute my exponent to get x to the n over 3 to the n. And now I can rewrite this as negative 2 over 3 to the n plus 1 times x to the n. To figure out the interval of convergence for this power series, there are two different approaches that I could take. First, I could do a standard computation using the ratio test. I'll let you work out the details yourself, but you should get that the radius of convergence is 3, and the interval of convergence is from negative 3 to 3. A second approach to finding the interval of convergence is to look at the history of how we made the power series. Our basic template power series was the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n, which converges when x is between negative 1 and 1. We then plugged in x over 3 for x. Well, this could, should converge when x over 3 is between 1 and negative 1. In other words, when x is between 3 and negative 3. Finally, we multiplied that series by negative 2 thirds. This doesn't change the interval of convergence. So the interval of convergence for our final power series is the interval between negative 3 and 3, just like you could have gotten from the ratio test. As a second example, let's find a power series representation of x over 1 plus 5x squared. Again, we want to use the geometric series summation formula. So we want to make this expression look more like 1 over 1 minus something. Well, 1 plus 5x squared is the same thing as 1 minus minus 5x squared. So if I just wanted a power series for 1 over 1 plus 5x squared, I could do that easily by using the geometric sum formula and getting the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 5x squared to the n. 
All I'm doing here is plugging in negative 5x squared for x in this formula. Since I want a power series for x over 1 plus 5x squared instead, I can just multiply everything by x. Again, I'd like to clean things up and make this expression look more like a standard power series. So I'll drag the x inside the summation sign. I can do that because the summation is over n, which has nothing to do with x. Now I can use my laws of exponents to rewrite this as negative 1 to the n, 5 to the n, times x to the 2n. Now x times x to the 2n is equal to x to the 2n plus 1, and so this gives me a good power series representation for my function. Although the problem didn't explicitly ask for it, it's a good idea to compute the interval of convergence to see for what values of x this equation actually holds. I'll use the history approach. We started with our old familiar power series, which converges when x is between 1 and negative 1. We plugged in negative 5x squared for x, so that converges when negative 1 is less than negative 5x squared is less than 1, which is equivalent to the inequality 1 fifth is greater than x squared, which is greater than negative 1 fifth. Notice that I had to flip around the inequality signs when I divided by negative 5. Looking at a graph of y equals x squared, I can see that x squared is between negative 1 fifth and 1 fifth. For x values corresponding to this section of the graph that I'm drawing here in green, or this interval of x values on the x-axis that I'm drawing in pink. To find the endpoints of this pink interval, I just need to find where x squared is exactly equal to 1 fifth, which is when x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 fifth. So the x values that satisfy my inequality are the x values in between these two values. I have negative the square root of 1 fifth is less than x is less than the square root of 1 fifth. Now the last step in my history is when I multiplied everything by x. This doesn't change my interval of convergence, which remains this interval here. In this video, I represented several functions with power series using the geometric series summation formula. Although only a limited class of functions can be handled using this formula, some of the techniques that I used in the process, like multiplying my whole power series by x or plugging in an expression for x, some of those techniques can be used in a much broader context to represent many different kinds of functions as power series, as we'll see.